It became quite clear very early on that there was a series of sub-themes to the exhibition, one of which was botanical drawings. And that is, of course, a huge specialist subject in its own right, and this is not the exhibition to refer to if you want a review of that in depth. But I realised, when looking through the list of drawings and artists that I wanted to include, that the study of plants, the drawing of plants, was a foundation for many different forms of extraordinary work. Following three months of pandemic lockdown, this theme seems unexpectedly topical, as so many of us have spent time on daily walks paying more detailed attention to the plants around us, whether wildflowers or those found in our gardens. The number of posts of plant images, drawn and photographed on Instagram, for example, is just one example of how important plant life seems to have been to our sense of well-being in these demanding times. To revisit this aspect of Lines from Scotland now, therefore, feels interesting in a different way. Two previous exhibitor posts earlier in this Insight series, by Laurie Clark and Francis Priest, explore elements of this theme. The exhibition includes the wonderful ginkgo leaf concertina pencil drawing by Laurie Clark and the sketches and test pieces from Patterns of Flora by Francis Priest. These works show us different approaches to visually recording plants and the ways in which botanical studies can stimulate some very disparate forms of human expression. The work of silversmith Michael Lloyd was a definite catalyst for this strand of lines from Scotland. I have long admired his ability to create what he terms a homage to the natural world by transforming the surfaces of his beautiful hand-raised silver bowls with chased plant patterns seen here in a pinecone study and vessel from 2018, now in a private collection, and the beech leaf and bramble study beakers in the exhibition. We are able to show his drawings of brambles and everyday plants from around his Dumfrieshire studio, and then show the way that these studies become pattern through more drawing, and which are then in turn reanimated as dynamic chased silver vessels with gilded interiors. You can hear Michael talking about the role of drawing of his work in a short film included at the end of this curatorial presentation. It was commissioned in 2020 by the Scottish Gallery in Edinburgh to accompany an exhibition of his work there. It felt interesting to try and show Michael's work, both his drawings and finished silver objects, alongside the work of different artists' renditions of the world of plants. This juxtaposition could potentially open up a new perspective on different forms of visual expression. To guide me into this specialist world of botanical art, I enlisted the help of a leading botanical scholar, Henry Nolte, who also has an informed interest in contemporary art. Formerly at the Botanic Gar Royal Botanical Garden in Edinburgh, I asked him a simple question. Is drawing by hand still of significance in the age of photography? and so on, to the botanist and to the discipline of a contemporary botanical art? The answer was an unequivocal yes. Nolte's scholarly eye and his ability to see the detail of the world around him in a different way, like some of the artists discussed here, is demonstrated well by a recent blog he wrote for the website of the Royal Botanic Garden Edinburgh, which you can access here. On a daily lockdown work walk in May, in Edinburgh's wholly urban, paved Melville Street, Henry identified 55 species of plant. Apparently the current total is now up to 81. Through Henry, I was introduced to the work of contemporary botanical artist Lily, Lizzie Sanders, who lives in Edinburgh and teaches one of the well-regarded botanical drawing courses at the Botanical Gardens in Edinburgh. I had come across Lizzie in a different context many years ago in the field of graphic design and was fascinated to see how her skill in this medium had translated into these very compelling plant images. I was also curious about the way that botanical art, the drawing of plants, which exists in the hinterland between scientific document and expressive form, is rarely discussed in the critical context of modern art. Lizzie herself talks about the way in which she works to ensure that 
neither art nor science are compromised. Her clear, dynamic, beautifully spaced compositions, whether of vanilla plants or dried leaves, both exhibited in lines, bears this out. Her design eye gives works a boldness and clarity not always so visible in botanical art. Sanders has works in the Shirley Sherwood collection at Kew and the Highgrove Florilegium, both collections of great significance in the field, as well as, as, well as many private collections around the world. The chance to place the graphic clarity of the work of Lizzie Sanders alongside the rich studies and silver surfaces of Michael Lloyd's work does something, shifts how we might look at the world of plants and their representation in these very different forms. The connection to the Royal Botanical Gardens in Edinburgh reminded me of an exceptional show I had seen there many years ago of works by the late Rory McEwen. McEwen was brought up at Marchmont House in the Scottish Borders and had begun drawing plants whilst a student at Cambridge University in the 1950s. But this botanical work, which was quickly recognised as, as of significance, was only one part of a brilliant, if sadly brief, interdisciplinary career which spanned being a blues musician in America, setting up an avant-garde blues music programme, Hullabaloo, for ATV in the 1960s, and running an active studio in London as a multimedia sculptor. We managed, courtesy of his daughter Christabel Holland, to source four leaf etchings from his estate to include in the exhibition. This was a very exciting moment. And these black and white works, mostly done towards the end of his life, bring this botanical sub-theme to life in a different way. And, I quote from Douglas Hall, former keeper of the Scottish National Gallery of Modern Art, who said of McEwan's work, McEwan's botanical work predated and outlasted all others, and in it he was most truly the artist of his time. For while a good many artists, in the 1960s and 70s, could work in the idioms of modernism. None could paint an auricular or an onion as he could, whilst possessing the consciousness of a modern artist. The botanical link appeared in another unexpected form of the work of another exhibitor, Glasgow contemporary artist Lucy Scare. I had been in keen to include Scare's drawing in the lines from Scotland exhibition from the beginning, not at the start with any botanical reference point in mind. I had first encountered works at Dogger Fisher Gallery in Edinburgh in the early 2000s and had been intrigued by the artist's vibrant and experimental use of drawing with different tools and in very different materials to create complex and layered images. For an artist who is very much situated in the multimedia world of contemporary art through film, sculpture and installations, her drawing nonetheless reveals a very direct hands-on and material approach to image making and ideas. In a video shot for the Tate in 2009, when she was shortlisted for the Turner Prize, Scare talks about the importance of interpretation being slowed down to create a feeling like thoughts embodied in the room, a mental landscape being transformed into a physical one. In the same film, she talks of collecting images as sources for her visual language, which are then transformed by her own working over or reworking the originals. This approach was exemplified by her exhibition The Green Man at Talbot Rice Gallery, University of Edinburgh in 2018. As part of her preparation for the show, Scare spent time in the University of Edinburgh archive, and one work that attracted her was Thomas More's 1855 Ferns of Britain and Ireland with prints by Henry Bradbury. Bradbury's prints were made by the Alois Hours process, in which plant specimens are pressed between a steel and lead plate, leaving an impression on the softer lead. The lead plate is then electroplated and ink added to suggest the colouring of the original specimen. This direct translation from plant to printed image was reimagined by Scare in a series collectively titled The Green Man, in which old paper copies of the Bradbury firm prints were transformed by the artist's addition of bold graphic strokes of colour 
in pen, pencil and ink. The work drew the viewer's attention to both the nature of archives, collecting and historical knowledge, and some of the extraordinary processes inherent in traditions of scientific botanical illustration. For the show, we managed to secure the loan of three scare works from a series of prints from 2017 entitled Available Fonts. In these, Scare represents some of her own black-on-black -black line drawings as etchings, which then act as a ground or field for layers of other printed images, Weimar banknotes, votive offerings from the Seine, that, these, that include recreated wood engravings from the E.J. Lowe 19th Century Field Guide to Ferns. These complex collage prints were created at Dundee Contemporary Art Print Studio. In available fonts, the artist manages to distill and connect disparate elements in ways that feel as precise and poetic as an auricular study in Mamakuan. And whilst the botanical element in Scare's work is just one image amongst many, it nonetheless created a strong reverberation with McEwen's work in the exhibition, both artists succeeding in highlighting and linking different fields of human knowledge. Musical composition as a response to the world of plants is giving, given an extraordinary form in the exhibition with the Heart Seas score by Glasgow artist Hannah Tuluki, commissioned in 2012 by musical duo Sonia Cromarty and Alice Rickards of High Heels and Horsehair. This score was commissioned as part of a series of contemporary compositions collectively called Transplanted, inspired by Fife-born Baroque composer James Oswald's Airs for the Seasons. Cromarty gives a wonderful introduction to the project and to Tuliki's score in the short accompanying new film, recorded recently during lockdown in Glasgow. Her film follows a short filmed reflection by Michael Lloyd on drawing, and is in turn followed by a recording of the Heart's Ease music. Thanks to all artists and to Five Contemporary for their contributions to this short talk.